Howdy folks, welcome to a windy day over here on my Vanstead uh, down by the lake. The wind's blowing 20-30 miles an hour, sometimes even more. It's going to be raining soon and it's a beautiful day. When you're by a lake, it's always a beautiful day, even if it's windy. It is what it is. Today I come to you a little bit disheartened. I had a high production moving pictures ready, almost ready, to, to uh, bring out, bring forth into the world. I was very close to being finished. And I can't blame Spielberger for this one because it's all my fault. I was dangling and doubling and playing with the editing program. And all of a sudden, I don't know why, I just went up and I clicked on file. And instead of stopping and thinking for a second, okay, I clicked on file, I'll just click off. Immediately, I clicked again, and I, when I clicked again, I clicked on something else. And I lost everything I had edited. I, I tried going to the backup. Everything that I had edited to that point was all gone. And it was over 20 hours worth of work. So all that was washed away with the wind, blown away, washed away with the lake, blown away with the wind. So it's very disheartening. Uh, for me, at least, it's very hard for me to do something twice. It's just, I, it's hard, very hard for me to do it. Even at work, I'm getting paid to, to do my work. And when I do something and, and I make it look nice and then my boss comes over and says, nah, you know, we were wrong. The plans call for something else. So we have to change it and do it all over again. I'm just going like, oh, no, no. You know, it's very hard. Even when I'm getting paid, it's hard to do it twice, the same thing twice. So I have to start doing it again. And it's, you know, it's not going to look exactly like what it was, but it's hard mentally it's it's really hard to do it again so i almost like i quit i i'm done i'm no more videos because I, I just you know and this time i have nobody to blame i've had like three videos two or three videos before that crash on me and that was the software's fault the software would crash and and i would lose everything so i think that happened two maybe three times but this time was totally my fault. I, I clicked twice so fast that I'm like, why didn't I stop? When I, why, when I clicked the first time, why, why didn't I stop? Stand back, wait, think, and act. I didn't. I acted without thinking. Having said that, sometimes we act without thinking. But there's always a solution solution to every problem the humanity faces came down to earth 2,000 years ago. God became man in the flesh. Christianity, unlike every other religion, is not a religion. By nature, Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with God through God in the flesh, through the second person of the triune God. One God in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God, three distinct persons. Not persons like you and I, but Christianity is distinct. And Christianity did not come to unite the world in Kumbaya. No. Christianity came, Yeshua, Jesus, came down to divide the world. He himself said that, you know, he did not come to unite, but, but to, uh, to create chaos, basically, to disunite, because there would be father, father would turn against son, and daughter against mother, and, and brother against brother. Why? Because of him. Because one brother would believe in him, and the other one wouldn't. 
one father would believe a son wouldn't or a son would and a father wouldn't so it's not kumbaya with Christianity it did not come to unite everybody let's unite everybody no it came to divide it's a double-edged sword that came to divide because in the end a remnant will be his believers and many will be will, will not be like those people that threw stuff on the lake um, that one time you know I call them heathen and they are heathen because and 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 I say that with with hurt in my heart because I know that if they continue down that path they are lost souls these people are lost souls if you don't believe that Yeshua came down to earth is fully God and fully man that lived among us, lived a sinless life, died on a cross, was buried for three days and rose on the third day and lives again. If you don't believe who Jesus said he was, you are not a Christian and you are not saved. You are doomed for eternity. So you could say, oh, they, we can worship all these other gods and it's just God by a different name it is not it is not God by a different name you are delusional and you are hopelessly delusional and you're gonna die hopelessly delusional because it's not there is one God and Jesus said that himself I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father but by me he didn't say I am one amongst many you may believe in me or you may believe in somebody else. It don't matter. It's all the same. We're all going to be doing kumbaya and it's all going to be cool. Cool. No, he didn't say that. He said the opposite. So if you don't believe upon him, it's, it's your own peril. You can be watching this and you're like, eh, who cares? But one day you're going to be face to face with God. And you're going to be on your knees and you're going to be declaring that Yeshua is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And it doesn't, doesn't matter if you believe in him or not. You will be on your knees. Now, you're going to, you could be on your knees willingly because you believe that he said, you believe uh, who he said he was. Uh, and he is and will be or you're going to be on your knees because you didn't believe but you're still going to have to confess every mouth every tongue will confess that that he is the son of God that he's God himself that he's Lord of Lord and King, Lord of Lords and King of Kings so every tongue it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter what you believe in every single tongue every single person will kneel before God and will confess that the only question is, on which side of eternity will you be? Which side of eternity do you want to be? I'll leave that up to you. I'm sure nowadays everybody has heard the message. The message has gone out throughout the world. Pretty much everybody has heard. God is waiting for the final hour. The hour where the last believer has believed and then that's it the door will be closed the day of the day of the end might be coming near we might be the generation that's much near to the end than any other previous generation I tell a lot of folks that if you ever see in our lifetime the temple in, in, in Jerusalem the Jewish temple in Jerusalem being rebuilt know that the time is short and once that temp temple is rebuilt, it would just be a matter of time, probably very short time. Or maybe the beast who is called the Antichrist will all be already be in the world. And when, when he proclaims a treaty with Israel for seven years, then you know that the world will only have seven years. You'll have seven years. In the midst of those seven years, at the three and a half year period, he's going to break that treaty. And, and then there's only three and a half years left for him and all unbelievers. 
So it could happen in our lifetime. If you see that happening, uh, know that your our time, if we're still around, our time is short. Um, there was a time when Israel didn't even exist. And the Bible is very clear. Israel has to exist. A country without walls, right? In the old days, cities and countries, you know, they have walls, especially the cities. They lived in cities with walls. And the Bible says, you know, when they dwell in cities without walls, very comfortably, um, then we know that the end is near. And until recently, we didn't have a country named Israel um, anymore. And, and then Israel became a nation. And then Israel didn't have possession of Jerusalem, which the Bible says they will have possession of Jerusalem. And then eventually they got possession of Jerusalem. Now they've had possession of Jerusalem for many, many years, but even though they have possession and they own the Temple Mount, they still don't do anything with it because the Muslims are there and they allow the Muslims to go there and worship, but they don't allow Christians or Jews to go there and um, worship. So at some point, something is going to happen. Either they're going to build a temple side by side with a Muslim mosque there, the Dome of the Rock, or that will be destroyed in a war or earthquake or something. Something will happen that the Temple Mound, the temple will be built. Uh, who knows? We don't know exactly what could happen, but something is going to happen. So at some point, all your waiting around will be too late. But even now, it, that doesn't have to happen. You know, we could be driving down a road and something minor happens you know you drop something you look down for a second when you look up you are face to face with a semi coming straight at you and you're done your life is extinguished in that second any one of us does not have the next second guaranteed none of us have that second guaranteed the only reason we are breathing is because God is allowing us to breathe God is holding every molecule in the universe together by His power. And He's holding us together. He's holding our breath. He's giving us breath. So without Him, we are nothing. So if you think you have plenty of time, none of us have tomorrow guaranteed much less the next second. We don't have the next second. We don't have the next hour, the next day, week, year guaranteed. None of us do. Um, you know, my friend Lisa's dad last year, he was fine. He was alive. He was living his life, going around camping with Lisa. And all of a sudden, he's at a red light waiting to turn. And this guy with a semi or a dump truck, he's looking on the phone while driving. And he just plowed right through him, killing him instantly. Um, Many years ago, maybe 20 some years ago, I was driving my car, going to work in the morning. Uh, my phone fell down. I looked up, I'm looking ahead. There was no traffic for like maybe a quarter mile. And I looked down just to pick up the phone for a split second. When I looked up, all the traffic had stopped. I thought the traffic was flowing. Everything had stopped. And in that split second that it took me to go down and grab my phone, traffic stopped, I hit the brakes, and I went through two cars, and I sideswiped the car on my left. My car, my car was totaled. The other car just had a broken light, and uh, it was totally my fault. But in a split second, instead of sideswiping that car, I could have hit the car dead on. It could have been a light pole or something. And my life could have ended right there. So we don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't know how much time we have. But Yeshua, Jesus, has offered us eternal life. All we have to do is accept that eternal life that he offers for free. You don't have to do any works. You don't have to be like the Jehovah's Witnesses, like the Mormons. You don't have to do works. There's nothing you have to do to be saved nothing you just have to accept it's a free gift from God so that no one should boast that they did more than the, the other one the other person to earn their salvation 
there's nothing you can do to earn your salvation except accept it and 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 do like the thief on the cross there were two thieves on either side of Yeshua Jesus and the thief one of the thieves said you know rem remember me when you get to your father's kingdom and Jesus said today you'll be with me in paradise so that that thief on the cross couldn't do any works he couldn't go distribute any uh, literature he couldn't uh, give out any pamphlets he couldn't he couldn't um, anything that these religions do he just accepted Yeshua for who he was and he was saved so don't be fooled don't follow those that tell you you must do these things to be saved it's a free gift there for the taken and I hope you take it and I hope you have a wonderful resurrection day now after the Sabbath as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave and behold a severe earthquake had occurred for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him, and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Yeshua, who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen just as he said come see the place where he was lying matthew 28 1 through 6.